<laughs> ground control to mission one. Do you read me? Come in, please. Mission one to ground control. Receiving you loud and clear. Prepare to engage transmission. Oh, and by the way, Dr. Knowles, where on earth is McCork? That's the thing, Colin. I'm not on Earth at all. I'm in space. Wow. And we're live from space in 10, 9, 8, 7. This is Brain Freeze with Dr. Knowles, Professor McCork, Colin the Floor Manager, and Miss Hucklebuck. Stand by! Welcome to Brain Freeze in space! Today we're asking, what is a black hole? To understand black holes, we first need to talk about gravity. Every object exerts a gravitational pull on every other, and the larger the mass of the object, the stronger the pull. We're all familiar with gravity on Earth. It's what keeps us from floating away. What goes up must come down! In space, these gravitational forces keep the moon orbiting the Earth and the planets orbiting the sun. So, what would it be like without gravity, Dr. Knowles? Let's find out. <laughs> this is brilliant. To find out what all this has to do with black holes, join us after this break. Show's going well, Dr. Knowles. What's it like up there? Oh, Colin, it's so beautiful. Looking back at planet Earth is truly amazing. Such a fragile world. So still, so silent, so perfect, huh? Hey, Doctor, look at the way my snot behaves in zero gravity. Ah. Professor! Ah. <laughs> Stupid gravity. Stand by in space. We're coming back to you live. <laughs> So tell us, Dr. Noyles, what is a black hole? Black holes are not really holes at all. In fact, they're the opposite of empty. They're full and a black hole. A black hole is an area of such immense gravity that nothing, not even light, can escape from it. Black holes form when a star collapses in on itself, producing a massive explosion. Boom! All the material left over is thought to have a mass of more than 10 suns, which gets squashed into a sphere roughly the size of New York City. It's so small now, and yet so big. I don't understand. Imagine if the entire mass of the Earth was squashed down to the size of a fingernail. That would be a lot of gravity. It is, and that's why other smaller objects are pulled towards it and trapped inside. I hope there are no black holes around here. Not to worry, Professor. The nearest one is hundreds of light years away. I think we're pretty safe. See you next time. Rain freeze from space. We are clear. Oh! Miss, Miss Hucklebuck. Miss Hucklebuck. Uh, Dr. Knowles, what's that tiny dot there? You mean, the one heading straight for us? Whoa! Oh, hello there. Any chance of a lift home? This is nuts! <laughs> She's bonkers, that one. Jeannie Mac, the Brain Freeze guy must be the smartest bunch in the whole Swipe universe. Well, except for our high-tech, hyper-smart kid geniuses, the Q Crew. Yes, of course. We do miss having them in studio, but in fairness, their new digs are so fresh. Yeah, and this week they're covering all the bases, from football to nail art to outer space. Oh, I can't wait! Q Crew, activate! Welcome, Jake, Clarice, and Dara. Hi, Athena. How are you? All the better for seeing you. Are today's questions loaded? Input it and ready to go. Let's see who's first up. 
Hi, Spike TV. My name's Mia, and I'd like to know what all the stars and planets are named after. Great question. Some of the names they come up with are pretty crazy. I think I should have a star named after me. Yeah, keep dreaming. I know someone who can help us. Access granted. David Moore, Astronomy Ireland. Hello, Swipe TV. I'm David Moore, and I'm Ireland's foremost astronomer. And I believe you want to know where do the stars and planets get their names? Thousands of years ago, ancient civilizations noticed the stars and they noticed patterns within them. So these star patterns were called constellations. And we today use the names that the Arabs gave those stars about a thousand years ago. And some of the cool names for the stars are Aldebaran in Taurus or Betelgeuse in Orion. And another interesting fact that you may not know is that when the ancient peoples plotted these star patterns, constellations, they didn't move except for five of them. And the Greek word for wandering star is planet. And then history took over, the Romans defeated the Greeks, and they named the planets after Roman gods like Mars, Venus, Jupiter. So here's what we know. The stars were named by the Arabs. The constellations are a mix from different mythologies of ancient peoples, and the planets were named by the Romans.